All right, so sending audio to your multi-track recorder, really what you're gonna use are just two buttons here, the stereo button and the direct button. The stereo button, because uh, automatically your mix is gonna be sent to your stereo mix. So any channel, the stereo button is on by default. But remember, when you're sending audio to your, uh, to your multi-track recorder, you do not wanna have that same input channel go to your stereo mix because you don't wanna double monitor. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna deselect the stereo button and you're gonna push the direct button. And that direct button is for that channel. So if you're on channel five and you wanna send it into Pro Tools, you're gonna to set up Pro Tools to be input number five, and then you're gonna hit that direct button on your, on your O2R, and it's gonna send it out to number five. That's how this works. You can't send it, if you're on channel five, you can't send it to number 15 or number 12 or number six or something like that. It has to go to number five. And this just makes sense. It's actually a little bit easier than on the audience because you don't, like you don't, it's like easier but less flexible. So on the audience, remember, if you're coming into channel five and for whatever reason, input number five is taken up on Pro Tools and you can't use it, then you could go to input, you could go to number 10, for example. So you just push number 10 on the routing matrix. And it still gets the audio to that point, but it's just a different uh, number. On the on the um, O2R, you don't have that option. So step number one, uh, number one here, but number one here is the stereo button. This sends the track signal to the stereo mix bus. It's on by default. Button number two here is the direct button. This sends the signal to the channels direct out to the multi-track recorder. And then number three is uh, for bus routing for subgroup mixing. These send the signal to the buses. And then number four here is the follow pan button. Press this to engage panning for the channel during busing. So if you're sending uh, stuff to the buses, uh, that's how you can get it to be panned left to right if you if you need to. Let's just jump over here. You know, I'm just gonna adjust my screen here. So I've got these things where they need to be. Put this over how like that. There we go. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. There we go. I'm gonna do like this with it. And we're gonna grab this one and move that over up a bit cool all right so uh, here's our, our signal flow on the O2R so we come into our input here and then it's got a pad and then it's got our gain knob and this here is all the um, analog side of things this is still in the analog world here and then from here after the gain it goes digital so this is where the AD conversion happens so it goes digital into channel one we've got a fader here on channel one and this goes into our for, and, and this is specifically for the SAE. This goes to our uh, digital output on the, on the card slot. So it's card slot one, channel one. So we've got channel one here. You push that direct button and it goes, it routes the audio to uh, slot one, channel one. That's what that one one means. That comes into our audio interface. Um, I, I realized yesterday that we no longer use the Sapphire at SAE. We actually got new audio interfaces um, back in like, I don't know, January or February or something like that. Whenever I was gone in Thailand, we got new audio interfaces in there, in that room. So uh, we no longer use the Sapphire, but it's okay because really that part uh, for you at SAE, you're not going to need to worry about the audio interface as much. It's more about just knowing where to route the audio and how it works in Pro Tools. So this goes into the computer uh, or like Logic or Pro Tools, whatever, and that's gonna be input channel one right here. You've got the input channel one. Then you're gonna go out of channel one as well to keep it one-to-one. -one. Remember, gonna keep it one-to-one. -one. Channel one goes to one, 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 all the way across. Channel five would go to five, 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 all the way across. So here, we're on channel one. We come into channel one. That's what this one right here is for. And then we go out of channel one, output one, to back to our digital out and it comes back out and it goes into slot one, uh, channel one, and this comes back to channel 25. It's still on fader number one there, but it's actually gonna be channel 25. So remember, you have to put that, you have to push that layer button there, okay? So that's how that routing there works. So let's just go through that step by step here. Uh, if you wanna to record to the multi-track recorder, on the O2R, you're gonna set your input level using the gain. If you need to push that phantom power button, you can do that. And then you go to your routing section and engage the direct 
button for the channel. Then step number three, you're gonna disengage the stereo button for that same channel. On Pro Tools, you're gonna set up a track. Uh, input is gonna be digital one, output's gonna be digital one, and this should be whatever channel is on the O2R. So if we're coming into channel five in, in step number uh, one, two, and three, those steps, if it's channel five, you're gonna set this for digital five, digital five, like that. Step number five here, we go to, are you gonna engage the input monitoring for the track so we can hear what's happening? And then number six on the O2R, you're gonna push layer 25 through 48, and you're gonna bring up the fader for the correct channel. Remember, the stereo button is on by default. That stereo button is on by default, so we don't need to push the mix button, the stereo button, anything like that. Like remember, on the audience, you have to push that mix button. On the O2R, you do not have to push that mix button. So um, it's not something we have to worry about too much. Cool. So that's that's that. Um, right. Uh, and if you have any questions about this, again, this is the type of thing you really need to see it being done. I did it in the video, um, so we'll be able to see it in that video once I get that video done, and I'll have some pretty little diagrams and stuff for you. But uh, for now, um, if you need more help on it, just talk to me in the Zoom class, and then you know watch this video again and kind of think about it. Unfortunately, that's all you can really do is just think about it. Um, <clears throat> all right. So if we are sending signal to our buses, and again, this is the same if you, as if you do subgroup routing in Pro Tools. So if you're gonna do some subgroup routing in Pro Tools, it's the same thing as here. It's just in Pro Tools, remember, you're gonna send the output of the channel to whatever aux or bus you wanna have your aux channel uh, that you're gonna route to. Same thing here, it's just here you're gonna push those bus numbers. It's just a button here. So first of all, if you wanna send signal to your buses for subgroup routing, you're gonna, step number one, you're gonna disengage, disengage the stereo button for that channel. Step number two is you're going to engage the routing number for the bus you wanna to send to, bus numbers uh, one and two, for example. If you wanna pan the signal, engage the follow pan button, and probably you do wanna pan the signal. Number four, go to the master layer and check the bus levels. Uh, link the bus channels if necessary, and then pan them if needed, and then step number seven is go to the bus to stereo page in the routing section and turn the bus channels on. Now, there are some diagrams for this here. Let's just take a look at all the stuff we're looking at here. So this is our routing, our input channels here. This is uh, just written down in here, and you do have access to this PDF, so I'm not gonna read this for you because you can read it yourself. I hope you read it yourself, um, but this is all the stuff we've been talking about here. And you can see it, if you push the, this triangle button here, uh, not triangle, sorry, the diamond button here, it will show you the routing display here, so you can actually see that. Um, use the arrow buttons in the parameter wheel, select, you know, whatever, if you want to do it with the arrow buttons there. That's the navigation cursor area down here on the bottom. Uh, and then you can see here, across the top, you can have them all go to the stereo, all go to the bus, or clear everything out if you want to. It's just a little, little shortcuts there for you. Okay. Now let's go here to the end of things. just find it here okay this is again it's in the PDF that you have so you can read through this stuff and if you have any questions about it uh, you know if you want to ask questions please ask me questions but basically sending bus outs to the stereo out so this is we're kind of going a little bit backwards here but this is like once you've sent your 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 mix here to the, the bus so for example once we've gone through steps one and two and three Steps one, two, and three, we turn off that stereo button for the selected channel, turn off the stereo button, uh, and then push one of these buttons here, one through eight, so probably gonna be one and two, or three and four, five, six, seven, eight. Usually you're gonna work in pairs here. So just make sure that stereo button is off, make sure these uh, here are on. And then what you're gonna do is, whoops, down here, make sure that your bus is going to the stereo out. By default, it's not set up to go to the stereo out, so, in here, you've got this here, and we're gonna, um, bus outs can be routed to the stereo out buses as follows. Bus out to stereo out settings can be stored in the bus to stereo library, so you can set it up in a library if you wanted to. Um, use the selected channel routing display button to locate the bus to stereo uh, page. And so you're gonna go in here, down here, it says bus to stereo, and you've got all these buttons here for each one of your buses, that's eight buses, and you're gonna use those 
uh, those little um, arrow keys to navigate around and hit that enter key to change it. And then increase and decrease buttons as well. So you can go to on off. So you make sure you turn them on like these two are selected on right here. And you're going to pan it left and right. See how these are panned left and right. You're going to pan them left and right. Now the, the fader, it's weird because the fader actually doesn't really control this here. You have to kind of mouse onto it and use the data wheel. It's a little bit strange the way it's set up. But um, also the on off button doesn't control that on off. It's, it's, I'm not really sure why they've done it like this, but that on off button does not control the actual on off. Um, oh, what's up, Jordan? How you doing? Uh, so you have to actually go in here to the screen and turn things on and off, and you have to pan them left and right because they don't actually connect up on the hardware for some reason. Fortunately, it's not something you have to do all the time. Um, and if you are using those buses a lot and you're always using them like pan, for example, stereo pairs of buses, then just go ahead and set that up and save that as a, as a recall. You could save it as like number 72, for example, and that's number 72 is just yours. And every time you come into the O2R, you just have it. So you just go to 72 and that's your setup with your buses and your effects and your everything. Remember, you can set up the O2R however you want to set it up and you can save that. And that's pretty cool. That gives you a lot of really nice uh, flexibility there for ease of use. Okay, um, so we can view the bus output settings uh, and name the bus outs if you want to name the bus. Um, that's on a separate page there. You don't have to do that, but you can do that. Okay, so that's everything that's here about these buses. It's not that hard actually, but it is um, it is pretty uh, important to know how to do this. Okay, like. I'm going to go ahead and, and stop the recording here for a second.